Hello and welcome back. I know I've been away for a couple of weeks, haven't shot any new videos recently, so I have a bunch of new subscribers to thank. So Book Crazy Girl, Orange Man 4242, The Southern Bookworm, Suleika, and um, Kami Titi, thank you all so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate that you're interested enough to bother subscribing to me. And now, on with the haul. First, I managed to get a couple of films from the McNaughton Popular Viewing Collection at Johns Hopkins. First up, I got Cyrus, and I haven't watched any of these yet. This one looks... This is one of those films where I'm sort of on the verge. It might be something I really enjoy, it might be really clever, or it could just kind of descend into gross-out territory, which, unfortunately, the presence of both John C. Riley and Jonah Hill makes me a little nervous, but we shall see. Then I got Cairo Time, a drama starring Patricia Clarkson. It looks like it's pretty low-key and understated, but I suspect it'll be pretty good because Clarkson's a really good actress. And then the rest of these are from the main collection of the Johns Hopkins Library. First, I'm continuing, continuing with my Vim Vendors. I got this film, The State of Things, which is a noir set in the film industry and is sort of also a commentary on the state of the film industry. And then I got Fear and Trembling. I'm really eager to see this because it is based on Stupeur et Tremblement by Emily Norton, which I read a few years ago and really enjoyed. It's a comedy about a young, Fran I forget if she's French or Belgian, but a young woman who's also named Emily who takes a job in Japan, and it's about the immense culture class she goes through. Really entertaining. Then I got this very highbrow work. Um, this is a double feature, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and Ghidra, Monster of Monsters, or Monster of Monsters, Ghidra. I've actually seen Godzilla, King of the Monsters because I'm a big um, Japanese monster movie fan, and Godzilla, you know, if you're, um, if you're that kind of a fan at all, it would be kind of ridiculous if you hadn't seen the original Godzilla, but I have not seen Ghidra. And Ghidra is, let me see if there's a good picture of him on here. Yeah, there is. Ghidra is that three-headed monster on the cover. And then I got The Last Days of Pompeii, probably sort of a hammy historical drama, but undoubtedly fun, based on the novel by Edward Bulwer-Lytton, who is famous for having written the sentence, it was a dark and stormy, the, or the sentence that begins, it was a dark and stormy night. And this, I just did a lot of literary adaptations this time around for some reason. Next I got The Mambo Kings, which is based on the Pulitzer Prize winning novel The Mambo Kings Play Songs of Love by Oscar Iguelos, which I have not read yet. Shame, shame. And then I got Voyager, which is by Walker Schlondorf, who directed a great adaptation of Gunter Grass's The Tin Drum. And this stars Sam Shepard and Julie Delpy, and is based on yet another book, Homo Faber by Max Frisch. And I have not read this one yet either, but Max Frisch happened to have written one of my all-time favorite books, I'm Not Stiller, which is, this is just a great existentialist classic novel. I would highly, highly recommend it. Unfortunately, this one, oops, this one revolves around a kind of twist about how two of the characters are connected, and I know the twist, but I figure it'll still be a good experience. And next from the University of Baltimore, I checked out The Missiles of October. This is a dramatization of the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1963 when the, oh wait, is it 1960, 1962, sorry, um, of 1962 when it truly looked like the United States and the USSR were going to have a nuclear war. And this is, it's about two and a half hours, and it's basically a dramatization of President Kennedy and President Khrushchev and the, um, the meetings they have with their staff members about how are we going to handle this situation. And even though I know how it came out, and presumably you do too, we did not wind up having a nuclear war, 
Um, it's still a really compelling film. And I, I will warn you, the music is really cheesy and some of the camera work is pretty cheesy, but the acting's really good and it's just really fascinating and compelling. I definitely recommend it. And then from Stevenson University, I got season four of Queer as Folk. You may remember a couple of weeks ago I checked out season two and was hoping it would be better than I remembered season one being, which I had seen a few years ago. And I was really pleasantly surprised. I thought season two was quite good, and I also saw season three. And it just, it seemed like after season one, they really started developing the characters more and developing the relationships more. And so I will definitely be seeing season five and seeing where all this goes. And now my borrowings from the Enoch Pratt Free Library. First up is Schultz Against the Blues. This was a highly acclaimed German film that I had been meaning to see for a long time, and I finally checked it out, and I'm embarrassed to say I did not get through it. It's about a polka-playing retired miner who hears a zydeco, um, a piece of zydeco music on the radio, and decides that he's, he suddenly falls in love with zydeco and decides to start playing zydeco instead of polka. And Okay, I mean, probably all of you watching this are like, and what was she expecting from this film? But I mean, I, I, I expected it to be pretty good. And apparently it's a smash hit in Germany. And supposedly halfway through the film, he, or I, I watched up to about halfway through the film, and he's about to go to this music festival in Texas. And supposedly he then winds up having a life-changing experience on the bayous of Louisiana. But it was really boring. I just did not get, I just, finally gave up. I was like, this is my life here, and I've already wasted one hour. Am I going to waste another hour? So if anybody has seen this, and if it really, really improves in the second half, please comment or send me a message and let me know, because I'd be willing to give it another chance. But, you know, you can't do them all. Then I got The Legend of Sorum Fortress, which is a Georgian film that would be the Georgia in Europe as you can see, because it says Soviet Cinema Today on the um, case, directed by Sergei Parajanov, who has done a fair number of really acclaimed films, including Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors, which I've also seen, and two I haven't seen, The Lovelorn Minstrel and The Color of Pomegranates. I enjoyed this. It was very stylized, and it's, it's based, obviously, on a legend. And it's, I wouldn't say... It wasn't one of my top movies of all time, but it was really interesting to watch. I would recommend it. And last but not least, I checked out yet another adaptation, The Turn of the Screw, based on a novella by Henry James, which I have read, and it's really a very good little story, quite scary. And if you're just starting to get into Henry James or thinking about getting into him, I would definitely recommend starting with that one because it's a little bit easier to read and easier to get into than his other work. I'm a huge Henry James fan, but he can be very difficult at times. So I hope that this, I haven't watched this yet, but I certainly hope it lives up to its source material. And if you've made it this far, thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.